Uh, we have lots of people. We have lots of people registered for this round, uh, and we're very excited to see so many of you showing up for our first webinar. Um, I want to start off by briefly introducing myself and my co-instructor, Sarah. Uh, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the tools that we'll be using in this class, and then we'll jump right into looking at Wikipedia. So uh, my name is Pete Forsyth, and I have been a Wikipedia writer uh, and editor and community organizer since 2006. Um, I was living in Oregon at the time, and I was very interested in learning about uh, the history of the state. I hadn't grown up there and I was very curious about it. So I was learning a lot about local history and politics and economy and sports. Uh, and Wikipedia was a really great tool for sort of keeping notes for myself and learning from other people around me. And uh, it was, I, I really found it very compelling to, uh, to, to leave some, to write a little bit of a Wikipedia article and then go away and come back and find that sometimes it had grown uh, to have more information that I hadn't found myself. So um, it, from there, I, I went on to uh, work for the Wikimedia Foundation briefly, where I, uh, I, I worked there for about a year and a half, de developing the early stages of what's become the Wikipedia Education Program, which supports university professors in using Wikipedia as a teaching tool. Uh, and now I do consulting on various kinds of Wikipedia projects for a number of different kinds of organizations. Um, and uh, my co-instructor for this class is Sarah Frank Bristow. And Sarah, could you take the mic and say a few words about yourself? Absolutely. Can you hear me OK? can hear you fine. All right. Uh, yes, my name is Sarah Frank Bristow. Um, I am a co-coordinator for this class. And it's an honor to be working with my friend and colleague, Pete Forsyth, on this. Um, I am primarily an educational researcher. I study the different intersections between education and technology. Um, and I came to Wikipedia because I just couldn't stand to read typos. <laughs> and I realized that I could go in and change them myself. I signed myself up, and that was what I did for a while. And uh, so I, I joined together with Pete to work on this primarily um, because I've studied open educational resources as part of my online education work. And we came together to work on the project called Communicate OER. And we're very happy to be able to offer you this course. Thank you, Pete. All right. Thanks, Sarah. So uh, I'm going to jump right in. For this first session, we have a, a number of things that we want to, uh, to present to you. We, we want to, I'm going to first show you the tools that we'll be using for the class and how it all fits together. Uh, and then I'm going to give you a, a general introduction to Wikipedia and what it looks like as a collaborative platform. Uh, and then we're going to divide up into teams. So this is something we have. We did run this course once before uh, from March through April. And we actually didn't, um, we didn't divide people into teams in that one. This is actually a, a piece of feedback we got from uh, someone who's rejoining us here, who I see uh, Christine is in our list. Uh, Christine Bush was a student from the last round. Um, and she pointed out, and several other people agreed, that it would have been better if we divide people up into teams so that there's uh, an easier, a more natural way for people to interact and, and learn together. So uh, the last, uh, hopefully, 10 minutes or so of the class uh, we'll be walking you through that, uh, how to assign yourself to a team and get to know your team members and, um, and introduce you to the homework for, uh, for next week. So first of all, uh, I want to show you the four, the four important tools for taking the course. Uh, and at Sarah's suggestion, I'm going to start off with the one that we're looking at right now, the, this Blackboard Collaborate. Um, I don't know if, uh, if people in here have used it before. Uh, but it, hopefully you've used some kind of uh, online webinar type tool, and uh, if so, this is probably going to look somewhat familiar. Uh, this is a, a very uh, capable program. It has a lot of different features, and we, we use some of them. We really don't push this to the limit. Um, so as you can tell, obviously you can hear me talking. Um, and the, uh, the most important thing to do when you first log in is always to run the audio setup wizard. So, uh, that's if you look in the, the tools menu 
um, under audio, you'll see the audio setup wizard. And that will run you through a few steps to make sure that your speakers or microphone, speakers or headphones and microphone are all working. Um, the microphone you don't necessarily need, but there will be times when we, uh, when we would love to hear from you. And so it's a good idea to set it up and make sure that it's working ahead of time. And even if you use audio programs a lot, and even if you've used this before successfully, we found it's really a good idea to run that wizard every time just to be sure because it's, it's not as consistent as you might hope. Um, it does have a video feature. Uh, we don't tend to use that. There are several things that we don't do because we want to make sure that everything is smooth for those of you on low bandwidth internet connections. So, um, you know what, I, I am going to turn on video just for a moment now, uh, just so you can see my face. I think maybe as an introduction that might be uh, <laughs> a nice thing for you. I didn't, hadn't thought about this before. I guess I could have combed my hair, but um, anyway, uh, I, hopefully this isn't uh, degrading things too badly for you, but um, I, I just kind of felt like I'd like to say hi. I'm going to turn the video off, and in general, we keep that off during the class just so that everything works well. Um, there is a screen, there are several different screen sharing features, and these are over to the right. Actually, I'm going to, um, there, there are, uh, you'll see three buttons at the top of the window. The first is for a whiteboard, and that's what we're looking at right now. So Sarah has put together basically a, an opening screen so that everyone sees what we'll be doing today. Uh, so we'll use that sometimes to, uh, to basically to draw or paste images in. Um, and then the next two buttons over are for um, for screen sharing, so that we can uh, so that we can look at the same screen together. And we'll be using that a whole lot, looking at Wikipedia pages together and editing together, looking at the code and things like that. So um, and then so below the the picture uh, in the upper left and the talk and video button, you'll see the list of participants, and that of course shows everyone in the session. Uh, hello again to you all. And um, there are several features in there that you can explore. We we don't tend to use these very heavily, but um, we. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I skipped the talk button. Uh, the the when you do uh, when we do uh, take questions or have discussion, uh, you'll need to click the talk button. That will be off by default, and we prefer that you leave it off most of the time when you're just listening, so that we don't get a lot of background noise. Uh, so you will need to click on that when you do want to talk to the class. Um, and then, so in the participants section, uh, there, are, there are a few different options, and I think I won't go into those in detail right now, um, but there might be, we might come to a place where we want you to raise your hand um, or where we want to uh, take a poll or something like that. There, I, okay, we already have a hand raiser. Um, so uh, below that, you'll see a chat window. And the way that we use this, uh, well, so I will generally be doing most of the presentation, and Sarah will be uh, will be running running things in the background, and and will probably be more uh, paying attention in the chat window and things like that. So you will see the the chat window called Room. That's where you all are, and you'll probably notice I'm not too I'm not interacting a whole lot there because I'm too busy talking and thinking about what I'm saying. So I generally will be watching a different room, which is just for me and Sarah. And she, when something comes up in the chat room that uh, needs my attention, she'll point it out to me. So uh, if you have any questions or comments along the way, feel free to use the chat window uh, for whatever's useful. Often what will happen is that someone will have a question and it's easy for someone else in the class just to answer it for them. Um, but, and, and so that's good. And other times someone will ask a question, it turns out that everyone has that question. And that's usually where Sarah will interrupts me and say, hey, you might want to point this out to the rest of the class. So I think that's about everything that's important for Blackboard Collaborate. Uh, Sarah, is there anything I'm, I'm overlooking or are there any questions coming up? Um, we have a student named Glenn who is making a very good point, which is that you can detach the chat panel and pull it out to the side and enlarge it. Uh, Pete doesn't get to do that because then it, it blocks his presentation screen and everyone else gets to see a gray bar <laughs> over his presentation screen. So, um, but I, that's what I do as well. I just click at the top of it and drag it out and make it longer and then you can see more than a few lines of chat at a time. Um, and I would also add that sometimes uh, Peter, when he's talking, will ask for a show of hands. And I don't think you reviewed this just now, but 
uh, right next to the actual hand raising button, there's a respond to poll option, and you can tick yes and no. And it's a really nice nice feature to sort of see what's the general temperature in a room. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, so uh, moving on from Blackboard Collaborate, the next tool that I want to show you is something called Etherpad. Um, and some of you may have encountered this before. This is, uh, it, this is a kind of online collaborative software that's it's sort of like a wiki where, in that anyone can edit it, except that it's for live editing. So it's much, if you've ever used Google Docs, uh, it, it, it's, it's more like that where multiple people can be logged in at once and actively typing things in. You don't have to stop and save or anything like that. So we have a page for this class, an Etherpad page, um, and we like to use that to keep notes during the, pad, during the class. So uh, Sarah will typically put any links and URLs that come up so that you can click them on your own, uh, in your own web browser, uh, and just you know, take notes on things that, uh, the, the most useful things that come up in the class. Um, so I'd like to pull that up in the, uh, in the screen here. Sarah, do you want me to do that, or would you like to pull it up? Um, I think it's easier if you sort of keep the reins in terms of presentation, but I can jump in with notes if you did. I just pasted the um, URL in to the chat room. Okay, great. Okay, so that should be that's loading up. And so here you can see this is a, a very colorful page, and I see that a number of you have already beaten me to it. <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, one thing, uh, one important thing to point out is if you see in the upper right hand, uh, near the upper right hand corner, you'll see a field that says enter your name, and that's next to a colored box. So it's nice if you can type your name in there. Um, and that way, whenever you type something into the main window, it's going to show up highlighted in that color, and other people will be able to see who typed it. Um, basically, what we, um, we won't use the, the chat window here very heavily. Uh, it's not a problem if you use it, but just so that we're all sort of tuned in uh, to using the same place for chat, we tend to use the, uh, the Blackboard Collaborate chat function. Um, but for any, anything that comes up in the class that seems worth noting down, please feel free to jump in and just, just add it in to this document. Um, so it's sort of a collaborative notepad for all of us. And, uh, and something that we'd like to try during this round of the course is for each class, if we could get a volunteer who's going to be sort of the main note taker, who's going to keep their eye on the etherpad for the class, and other people can also come in and drop things in, but that person is sort of making sure that the very most important things really get in here and that it has a, a good general structure so that it's useful for students both in this class session and also people who might not be able to attend but are trying to catch up later. Um, so is there anyone who might be willing to volunteer to do that this week? Why don't you raise your hand in the, uh, in the main room in Blackboard Collaborate? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Is that an America-centric joke? Um, so we, the last time we, we generally did it where Sarah did most of the note taking, but uh, it really would be uh, it would be a nice way to, to get involved if there's anyone who, who generally does like to take notes uh, to do it in a way that other people can, can see them. Anyone want to raise your hand and, or make a comment? People can just Sarah? join in if they, if they feel so inclined at any point, and I can sort of set the precedent this time, and we'll see if anyone is into it next time. Oh, and also, we, you might want to also mention that we oh, I see Christine said that she can. Tweeting. Excellent, excellent. Um, so, and I see Christine says that she can if no one else wants to. So, uh, yes, please, Christine, that would be that would be excellent. And um, if anyone else, you know, please do join in and 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 feel free to add your. Ah, uh, yes, gray bar. So, the gray bar will show up once in a while when I click back and forth to Blackboard Collaborate, and that's. Uh, that's just an unfortunate little uh, interface bug that we don't 
we haven't found a great way to get around. So if it does happen, just feel free to point it out and I will click back to my web browser. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to move on from, uh, from Etherpad. Uh, hopefully this is a useful tool, tool for you are. And uh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to, I'm just going to briefly take you back to the, um, the peer to peer university page. Um, and that is, uh, so that is j.mp slash wikisu, all uppercase is a shortcut to that. But the main thing that I want to say about this page is that now that you've registered for the class, you don't ever have to come back here. Um, there is the, the, one, uh, the one piece that you will have to come back for is to submit your final project to earn the badge from the class. Uh, but apart from that, really the day-to-day, um, everything that you need to take the class should be on the Wikipedia pages that I'm about to show you uh, and in these sessions and uh, Blackboard Collaborate and Etherpad. So um, if you ever are just really lost and come here and need to get back into the class, it's, it's a good way to find the link to the class Wikipedia page. Um, but there's actually another shortcut that we have for that, which is also j.mp slash, and then this is lowercase, wiki dash class. And be sure you get the dash in there. If you don't, I think you're going to end up on some page about a horror movie on Russian Wikipedia. So um, this is just a, a shortened URL, so you don't have to type in that that long, long uh, string to get to this home page. But this is really the central resource for our entire class. Uh, and this is something uh, Sarah really put a lot of uh, design work into this uh, for this round of the class. Uh, if anyone was with us in the last round, uh, Christine and anyone else, this is going to look pretty different than how we had it the last time. Um, it's really this, this one page tries to centralize the very most important information um, that you'll need throughout the class. And then you'll find that there are links. Right now, there's only a link for week one, uh, but there will be links for each week's class session. So every week, you'll want to look at that page as well. Uh, and we'll also have a page up soon about the, the final project, um, which tells you how to, how to complete the course. Um, and then the, the one other main page that we're going to get to at the end of the class is this Teams page down here. Um, and so that's going to be where you're going to uh, form your teams and find other people on your teams. Um, for discussion, obviously it's, uh, you know, communication and collaboration is, is a, a very central part of what Wikipedia is and what this class is about. So uh, anytime you have a question between classes, anytime you're, you're uh, lost and need a reminder of something, or if you ha if you've just learned something and you think that it's useful and you want to point it out to other people, all of that kind of interaction should be happening on the, the course's talk page. So anytime you're looking at the main course page, you'll see this talk tab, and we're going to get in we're going to get into this in a little bit about how on Wikipedia there's a talk page for every page. So this is a place a, a page that's designed for discussion. Um, it's not necessarily the, the most intuitive um, if you're used to having discussions on tools that are really designed for it, like blogs and, um, you know, online forums and things like that. You're going to find that this is a little bit confusing, but, we're, but hopefully after this class today, we'll, we'll give you the, um, the basic tools you need to be able to make a comment. And the important thing to keep in mind with that is you really can't mess anything up here. Um, so this page is, this, this talk page is just for our class. Uh, it is publicly visible to anyone else on the internet, but there's really no reason that other people would come here. There's no expectations around this class um, that are going to cause anyone to, you know, be upset with you for, for formatting something wrong or, or anything like that. So, um, you know, if you have a question and you can figure out how to edit the page, but you don't know how to sign your name or you don't know, you know, how to make a new line or indent properly or something like that, give it your best shot. But Basically, just don't worry about it. And if it if it comes out formatted weird, one of us will be along soon enough, and we'll you know it, it, we'll probably be able to figure out what you meant to do and and help you fix it up. The basic way that you're going to use it, though, is anytime you have a new question or a new topic, is you'll click this new section button, and that's going to give you a, a screen where you can put in a subject, which will be the, the subject line for it, like uh, you know need help with formatting. 
uh, and then you'll type your message down below. You, you always want to sign your message, and the way that you sign on Wikipedia is with four tildes or squiggly marks at the end of it, and that's going to put your name and, uh, and a date stamp. And then you'll go down and click Save Page. So uh, we'll, we'll come back to this after we've had a little bit more, after I've given you a little bit more of a general intro to what Wikipedia, how editing Wikipedia works. But for now, just keep in mind that this, this one page is going to be our most central place for discussion. So uh, don't be distracted by discussion pages on the peer-to-peer -peer university site. Uh, where those are built into the interface, but we're not particularly using those. This is the one place where we'll be actively monitoring it. And we encourage you very much to read each other's questions. And if you're able to answer each other, uh, please do that. We feel that's a very important part of the learning process. And we really encourage it. And if, if we see that you've answered a question you know, partially, but there's something else we want to add, we'll do that. And you're going to find that that is a good example of how Wikipedia works at its best anyway. So those are skills that are going to transfer well to having discussions about articles. So I'm going to uh, pause for breath here and ask Sarah, uh, do we have any more questions or, or thoughts coming in? I'm going to say something that I just wrote to you separately in our other chat room. Um, I'll just say it here. It's that although although Pete's giving a tour of all of the other tools that may come up in the course of the class, there's not really any need during this particular class to do anything except watch this webinar that Pete is doing. People are saying it's kind of hard to go back and forth between the different platforms. And I just I just wanted yes. to make it clear that you can if you want to follow along in a browser, but I in theory if if the whiteboard is working properly on your screen, you should be able to just see Pete browsing, um, and um, that should be all that's strictly necessary. Yes, very good point. So, so this is, uh, as I said at the beginning, I ha we have a lot of new information to share with you today in this uh, in this first class. And uh, yeah, I very much agree. These are these are just these are tools that you can use, but there is no expectation that you're going to just jump in and start, you know, etherpadding and chatting and clicking on wiki page links in your own browser. Uh, I can see how that might make some people uh, feel like they're going crazy from the beginning here. So yes, please do feel free to just sit back and watch. Um, but if you do have questions, that the chat window within Blackboard Collaborate is probably the one place to make sure you uh, speak up and make sure that we don't leave you behind. So um, I think that we are ready to move on. Oh, I, I did want to, uh, I'm going to go back to the main class page. Uh, and I'm going to give you a, a, a little bit of a tour of what's in here. Um, at the top, you have this basic introduction to the class. Hopefully, uh, this isn't the first time you've seen it, but if, if you haven't, you might want to come back and read this. Pete, can I interrupt for one minute? Um, sure. the, uh, the page is scrolling a little more slowly than usual, so okay. we're seeing lines a little more than we usually do. I just wanted to let you know. Yeah, okay, I'll just scroll more, more lightly. So, um, uh, as I said before, there's there's going to be a page for each class, and uh, let's just take a look at the week one class. I'm going to click into that. Um, on all of our pages, you'll see this beige bar across the top, and that'll be an easy way to, if you want to click, if you want to get back to the main page, there will always be a link in the beige bar to the main course page. Um, and so uh, this will always, also have a link to the webinar, so if you're coming in to join the class uh, and you need to figure out where to click to join in, that link will always live here. Um, and then we'll tell you a little bit about what we're going to do this week. Um, we have a couple sections that cover that here in class this week and Wikipedia under the hood. And then there'll be a section on the homework. And I'm going to go through this week's homework in more detail towards the end of this session. Uh, but I do want to make the general point now. Uh, we, there are several sections under homework here. There's do this, read this, uh, and then we have watch this, and we have an extra credit session uh, section. Um, so I want to be clear. These, um, the, the reading especially, there's no expectation that you will read every single thing here. Um, we, 
we do it is important to do everything in the do this section, uh, especially for this this first assignment because many of these these are the things that are going to help you get set up in the course uh, and join a join a team and things like that. Um, but when you get down to the read this section, um, we've we've added several things that uh, that'll address different angles and annotated it. And this is something where you you know you can really use your own judgment. If you've worked on wikis a lot before, there might be some things in here that uh, that that are really basic to you. So feel free to skip that. Um, if there's ever something that's really critical that you need to learn between classes, we will uh, I'll, we'll be sure to call it out uh, specifically. So uh, and then and that also goes back to the uh, the badge that you'll earn if you complete the the work in the class. These weekly homework assignments are not something that we as instruction, in, instructors are closely tracking. You will be uh, sharing these things with your team uh, and also uh, we'll be able to look at them. So if you run into trouble on your weekly assignments uh, or if you want some feedback, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to jump in and look at that. But this is really more for guide, your own uh, guidance through the class. And there is a final project. I'm going to show you the page for that um, in a moment. That's separate from the weekly homework, and that's the one thing that we'll be looking at in awarding the badge at the end of the course. So if you find yourself getting a bit behind on this homework, um, as long as you can still understand what's happening in the class, don't worry about it. Um, there's, there's no one really, uh, no one looking over your shoulder and making sure that you do every single thing. Um, so I'm going to go back to our main course page, and you'll see below the uh, below the week. Uh, the week links. Uh, we have this live weekly classes and labs. So this describes a little bit about how we connect, about Blackboard Collaborate, like I just showed you. Uh, and also, uh, I want to mention that we will have lab sessions every week. Uh, we're going to start these out um, as one hour every week. It's going to be at the same time of day, uh, which for people in the America will be on Thursdays, uh, Thursday evenings at the same time of day, and if you're in Asia or Australia, uh, it'll be Friday mornings at the same time of day. So those sessions are optional, uh, but I think students have, uh, have found that they're very useful, and we, we don't they're not as structured. They're, uh, I don't prepare anything for the lab sessions. I basically will come and, and take whatever questions you've come up with as you've done the reading or worked on articles, and we often get into things that um, you know, sometimes everyone is, you know, there are questions that everyone really wants to know the answers to. Other times there's someone who's just come across something interesting and esoteric and we dive into that. So these are a good opportunity to, um, to get to those kinds of questions that we don't always have time for in the main classes. Uh, then there's the student teams, which again I'm going to get to in, in detail at the end of the class. Uh, and then there's a section for when is the class in my time zone. Obviously, you're all here, so I think you figured out when it is in your time zone. But if you ever forget, this is a place you can come and click. It's the same every week. So um, in the last session, we had to deal with daylight savings time or summertime. So some of this was changing throughout the class, but we won't have that issue this time. Um, and oh, I see that we have a different section for lab sessions. So I just talked about that. And then down at the bottom, uh, we have this section on grading. So this, is, this tells you about the WikiSue Burba badge. Uh, we do have uh, someone who has earned the WikiSue Burba badge among us. I mentioned before Christine has joined this class. Uh, so she was the first student in the last round to, um, to submit her project for the badge and earn it. Uh, and what you have to do is, is lined up here. You're going to improve, you're going to choose an article partway through the course on Wikipedia, which might be a brand new article or it might be an existing article that you're going to improve. And you're going to uh, do certain things to that. And then also throughout your homework assignments and those edits, uh, you're going to want to accumulate at least 200 edits to Wikipedia. And that's, I know that sounds enormous if you hadn't, haven't edited a wiki before. Um, but when we say edits, uh, what that means in sort of Wikipedia jargon is changes to a page. So that's everything from fixing a typo to uh, adding a sentence about yourself on your user page to leaving a question for your, your team on the team page, every single one of those things is going to count as an edit and they're going to add up much faster than you might expect. Um, but we do encourage you from the early stages to, um, to really dive in, you know, roll up your sleeves and start 
uh, start experimenting on Wikipedia. There, uh, you might want to be a little gradual about working on articles because uh, more experienced Wikipedians might uh, find find problems with uh, if you're making too many edits without sort of understanding the standards of Wikipedia too early on. Uh, but when we're talking about discussion pages and your user page, uh, and we'll get get into that distinction in a moment. Uh, it's really, uh, there, there's, there's not much you can do to mess things up. So we encourage you to, to start getting a feel for it early on. So let me, uh, I want to just refer back to my notes for a sec. Sarah, is there anything else coming up? No, we're doing, we're doing great. We have 30 more minutes. Okay, thank you. All right. so. Uh, I want to, I'm going to move through the next one very briefly then. Uh, I, want to, I want to introduce sort of the background that brings us to having this class, which relates to the, the topic of open educational resources that we're going to be focusing on. So uh, Sarah and I, as I think we mentioned in our introduction, are working together on a project called Communicate OER, uh, or Open Educational Resources. Uh, this is a, a project that is sponsored by the Hewlett Foundation, which is uh, one of the bigger foundations in the U.S. and in the world. Uh, they're, uh, I would say, the main foundation that has uh, advanced, has, has really worked for the adoption of open educational resources in the last decade uh, and ways to freely share educational resources around the world. And so this project is rooted in the belief that um, that those efforts will be more successful if there's widely accessible factual information about what are open educational resources and what does it mean and how does it fit together. So many of you will have come to us that don't have any background in education at all, and that is perfectly fine. Um, but we do want to, um, we, we will use open educational resources as sort of a, as the topic that we draw most of our examples from throughout the class. Uh, and I think many of you will, uh, I, I hope, choose to work on relevant articles for your main projects. Um, and, you know, open educational resources is a topic area. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but it's something that's, it has a very strong kinship with Wikipedia. Um, as far as the idea of, of creating things where it's possible for many people to interact and improve them over time, um, that, you know, fi finding ways to, uh, engage in a learning community that are not rigidly defined, but that uh, that encourage people to add their own creativity and learnings, even even to the resources that other people are using to learn from. So, um, through that project, Communicate OER, we uh, we uh, got involved with the School of Open, uh, and that's part of Peer to Peer University, which is a place where other courses like this on a number of different topics around. Uh, free licenses, open source software, openness in education are being conducted online. And uh, if you like this class, you may uh, find that you really uh, enjoy some of the other courses in the School of Open. So you may want to go back to that peer-to-peer -peer university page and explore some of the other courses there. So uh, with that, I am going to jump in and show you a Wikipedia article, and we'll we'll take a look at um, some of the structure of a Wikipedia article and um, and what oh, let's see uh, I'm I'm going to show you what some of the uh, some of the common features are in a Wikipedia article and um, uh, just start talking about some of the things that you'll be doing as you do your homework assignments and as you move towards your final project. So I've chosen this article uh, on MIT Open Courseware. Uh, this is a project out of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, uh, which is a university in the U.S. Um, this project is, this, this is one of the early components of what open educational resources are. Uh, in fact, uh, many people will use the term open courseware synonymously with open educational resources. Um, it's, a, it's a similar concept, and, and some would say it's the same concept. Uh, but MIT OpenCourseWare is uh, is its own distinct project and is a collection of free educational resources um, that that people all over the world can use and reuse in a variety of different classes. So this article, uh, I'm going to just I'm going to walk you through it uh, and comment on it from the 
perspective of a uh, of a regular of of, a, of an experienced Wikipedian and, and point out some of the things that uh, that stand out to me about this article. So the first thing that I notice when I look at an article is usually how long is the lead section. Um, the lead section is everything above the table of contents, and um, especially for a somewhat complex topic, it's very common, and I think that probably a lot of people, have, a lot of you have seen, uh, for an article to have lots and lots of information, but only um, maybe one or two or three sentences in the lead section. And when I see an article like that, I generally assume that it's not going to be a really high quality article because what that usually indicates is that many, many people have added details throughout the article. They've come along and they've said, oh, I know a, a piece of information that isn't in here and they've stuck it in, but that nobody has really taken a look overall at the article and thought, okay, what's the best way to present all this information? What's the, what's the best way to structure it and the best way to introduce someone who hasn't encountered it before? Usually when, when that has happened, you'll end up with a longer, more detailed lead section. And so when I look at this article, the first thing that jumps out to me is that since there's a, a three paragraph lead section with several links in it um, and several different dates in it, it looks like some of that has happened. So I'm, I'm feeling good about this article early on. Um, one thing that we don't see here that you see in most uh, English Wikipedia articles is uh, an info box. So we do, we do have a, a, actually a video on the right-hand side, which is kind of unusual. Um, there aren't a whole lot of videos on Wikipedia, plenty of pictures. Um, but usually you'll see something that has kind of uh, some, some factual information there uh, that for something like this might say uh, date founded or, you know, host institution, uh, you know, the name of the founder, things like that. Um, and that's a nice thing to add to an article, but it's not a requirement and not every article has it. Uh, so I'm going to scroll down here a bit. Uh, as you see in the table of contents, um, which of course you can click, uh, we have uh, everything else in the article is under this heading of project and then there are subheadings of history, technology, and funding. And then what's below that is, is just uh, links and references. So if you click on project, that jumps you down to that section. Um, I'm, I want to point out that we have these edit buttons for each section. So when we get to actually working on the articles, those are going to be really useful buttons because you'll be able to just edit one section without having to worry about uh, everything else surrounding it. Then as we, as we look at the section itself, um, there are, there's a few things I want to point out. We have, in this section we have, we have four paragraphs, so that's nice. It's been divided up into a sort of manageable, uh, manageable organization. Uh, and then we have blue links throughout the text. So when you have links within the, the text of a Wikipedia article, those are almost always and are generally supposed to be internal links. So that means links to other Wikipedia articles. So if I click here, I'm going to see the Wikipedia article on distance learning, um, distance education, actually. Um, and they're not going to be links to external websites. If, if you want to put an external website as a, um, as a citation or a reference, the best way to do it is as a footnote. So uh, if I click here on this Number three, that's a footnote that's going to justify this, sen this sentence that, um, that basically proves that this project was spearheaded by, uh, that this professor was one of them. So if I click on that, it'll jump me down to the, uh, the references section. And then if I want to get back to where I was in the text, I'll click on the little angle next to it. And that jumps me back up to the footnote. So citations are, are tremendously important on Wikipedia. They're, uh, they're really the thing that makes it possible uh, to write articles where people might have different perspectives and focus on different things. Um, when you, if, if people have a disagreement, the very most important thing is to look at, well, what are the sources that inform that? Who's, what independent uh, published publications have covered this topic and what have they had to say about it? And, um, and that's, that's generally the, um, sort of the central thing that Wikipedia uses to determine what it should include. Um, I'm going to jump down past these sections to the see also and references section. So see also is a place for internal links in Wikipedia that are generally relevant to the subject but that didn't really have a home within the text. 
uh, it's generally discouraged to have a really long list of see also links. This is probably towards the longer end of, of what should be there, but these are, you know, I think fairly, it's a, it seems like a reasonable collection to me, so I don't see a major problem. Um, the references section I just mentioned, external links is similar to see also, but it's for uh, links that are outside of Wikipedia, and again, that weren't included as specific uh, references to support certain facts in the article, but that are just general resources related to the article. Uh, you'll also see here, these are called navigation boxes. So we have this one on massive open online academic education programs. Boy, that's a mouthful. Um, and you'll, they'll often be collapsed, and you can click this show and hide button. And these are ways to navigate through Wikipedia and find uh, related concepts. So you see MIT OpenCourseWare is part of this box, but then there are these other similar things um, in this nice organization. Uh, and then ideally these navigation boxes are really supposed to be next to each other, so they should really be down at the bottom of the article. This one up here should be down next to MIT. But then here's another one that's various different things at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So I think that's uh, enough for a basic introduction. and. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause and see if there are questions, but I am feeling like we're falling behind a little bit, so only if it's something that's that's really important. Sarah, what do, we, do we have anything? No, I think you have everyone's rapt attention. Uh, excellent. Okay. So, um, the next thing I want to do is I want to show you the different tabs at the top of the screen. And I am, I, I think the reality of where we've ended up at, I'm not going to be able to give you as thorough an introduction as I would like to. I'm going to describe these in, in very general terms, and then I'm going to pick back up next week. But hopefully this will be enough to, to get you started. When you look at the top of the screen, you're going to see, well, the, anytime you're looking at a Wikipedia article, you'll see this article tab at the left is highlighted, and also this read tab, so you're reading the article. Um, uh, there, the uh, so so this this brings us to the the concept of the body of work that is Wikipedia, which is really distinct from the many many pages on Wikipedia that are designed to help people collaborate in building that body of work. So we're going to see uh, in a moment the concept of a namespace, uh, and we'll get right to that. I'm going to click on the talk page. So every article has its own talk page, which is a place for discussing improvements to this specific article. You don't have to use it. But anytime, if you want to add, you know, a big chunk of content and you're not really sure if others are going to agree with what you're doing or if you think that there's something that needs to be deleted or rearranged, uh, it's always a good idea to bring those kinds of things up on the talk page. So when we click on the talk page, I want you to notice what happens to the title here. It's going to change to talk colon MIT OpenCourseWare. So this is the, the thing before that colon, the word talk, that is a different namespace, and there are a number of different namespaces on Wikipedia. There's a user namespace, which is where your user page is going to live, uh, that tells people who you are. Um, there is the Wikipedia namespace, which is a really big one um, that has lots and lots of policy pages. Uh, there's a manual of style that describes uh, how articles are supposed to be formatted. Um, there are election processes for determining who should be an administrator. Uh, or what articles should go through peer review and be featured on the front page. So lots and lots of things about how to organize the project of Wikipedia live in the Wikipedia colon namespace. And then there are some others. But the, the important thing to understand for now is that the article namespace is really the special one. That's the one that people care the most about what you do. And uh, as you start working on Wikipedia, when you work in the article namespace, you want to be a little bit more cautious than you are with the other ones. You're not going to ever break anything on Wikipedia. If you do something and it messes up the formatting, it's not a big deal. It's going to be easy to go back. Uh, but some people really find it very discouraging when they start uh, working on Wikipedia and find that their edits are being undone because maybe they don't understand fully uh, the policies around sourcing or uh, the way that articles are typically formatted. Um, it's, it's very, very common for new contributors to have their edits reverted. And I just want to tell you right now, please don't take that personally. It will happen to, I would guess, almost all of you. And that's what we have this class here to work through. Um, so when it happens, if you don't understand why, bring it up with us and we'll, uh, we'll sort it out and we'll get you uh, pointed in a direction where your next edit probably won't be reverted. 
So uh, in the talk page section, this top section is actually not discussion. This is these beige boxes give you some information about the article. I'm going to leave that for later. Uh, but for the actual discussion, you scroll down and you'll see all of these headings. Sometimes you'll see blank. Sometimes nobody has discussed a page at all. But in this case, there are 12 different topics that people have brought up for discussion. If you want to bring up a new topic, you would just click the new section tab at the top, and that'll give you a form where you can do that. And if you want to just see what people are talking about, you can scroll through this. And be sure to always to look at the dates, because sometimes you'll be looking at stuff that's, you know, 10 or 20 years old. <laughs> 10 or 20. <laughs> Wikipedia isn't that old. Um, you know, it might be it might be five or six years old what you see in here, or it might be yesterday. So, um, you know, pay attention to the date stamps at the ends of of people's signatures. Um, the the next one I want to show you is the view history tab. So as people edit the article, actually, so I'm on the talk page. If I were to click view history, I would see the history of the talk page itself. So what I don't want to see is the history of the article. So I'm going to click back on the article tab and then view history. So here's another one where I'm not going to be able to, to show you all the detail, but there is a ton of information on this screen. Um, and the important thing to understand is that every line is a distinct edit or change to the page with the most recent at the top. So uh, you might want to explore this a little bit on your own. There's also a video that you'll see in, the, in this week's um, wiki page if you want to watch that uh, that describes how this page works. But this is a really important piece of how people understand what each other are doing, how people revert to an older edit if something gets messed up, uh, and things like that. Uh, finally, the edit button, which is really going to be one of the core pieces of this course. This is where you can edit the article. So um, let's see. I have, uh, well, I, I did not intend to have this feature turned on here. Um, OK, so I think edit, so I'm going to click on edit source. So what we're going to look at is this is the code that produces the wiki page. There is a new feature that I was looking at a moment ago. If you click the edit button, you will probably get the visual editor, which does let you edit um, without the codes, but it doesn't let you do a lot of fancy things like add images or uh, you know certain kinds of formatting. So it's in this class, we're going to look a lot at the code. You, uh, you will probably find that you're more comfortable using the visual editor, but I think it's important that you, uh, that you have at least some understanding of what's going on under the hood. So I'm not going to give you uh, the, the intro that I usually do to this right now, but we will get to that next week. Um, instead, I, I really want to get uh, to dividing up into teams. Uh, and I actually have a short list of, of some specific points I want to mention before we do that. So um, let me see here. I'm just going to read through this for a second and see which ones I can skip. Um, oh, OK. So uh, one thing I'd like to point out is the community portal. If you look in the left-hand navigation, you're going to see under the in interaction Bar, there's this link for community portal, and in your first homework assignment, we're gonna uh, you're gonna find that you're asked to uh, find an edit to make on Wikipedia. This is the best place to go uh, to find a sort of random article that needs some help. So if you scroll down, um, you're going to find if you scroll way down here to this help out section, you'll see that there are different section. So if you want to fix spelling and grammar, these are articles that have been tagged, but they have problems with their spelling and grammar. Uh, if you want to fix the links in an article, uh, you'll, you'll find this section here. Uh, so you can look for a section that's uh, appropriate to what you know how to do or what you're interested in doing. Uh, and then there are these learn how links as well, which are these are not part of our course, but they uh, will probably be helpful for those of you who are interested in exploring a little bit on your own. Um, I want to mention the possibility of an edit conflict. I'm not, we were going to do a demo, but I don't think we really have time. Sometimes when, uh, when you go to edit a page, and this is going to happen in this class sometimes, uh, you'll find that someone else edits it before you click save. And so you'll get uh, a really jarring, when you go to save the page, instead of it showing up with your new edit to it, um, you'll get a big jarring screen that says there's an edit conflict and it shows you the new version that you did and the new version that the other person did and you have to figure that out. Um, and just as a general rule, if that happens, uh, just hit the back button in your browser 
and that's going to take you back to the screen that you were just editing in, and then you can copy and paste your text out of there and just start over from scratch. Just click the edit button again and, and try again. So that's, that's probably the easiest way to deal with an edit conflict. Also, another general practice, another general way to avoid getting edit conflicts is to try to make rather small edits. If you're going to add three or four sentences of text, don't add a sentence now and then go do research and come back and let it let that edit window stay open for half an hour before you click save. Instead, save after you write the first sentence and then go do your research and then click edit and save the next and, and, and so on. So uh, if you didn't understand that, don't worry about it. I think that we, you know, we'll, we'll come back to it if anyone runs into this issue later. Um, so I think let's, let's talk teams. Um, so I'm going to go back into the Blackboard Collaborate window here. And uh, let's see, oh, I'm going to pull my, pull my participants list out as one of our students just suggested so I can see the list a little better. Um, and actually I'm going to go back to our, uh, our main course page. And, and show you where our roster is. So if you go to the student teams section, there's a link there to the teams page. And you'll see some instructions up at the top there. And I'm going to walk you through what those instructions are telling you to do. At the, when, we, when you scroll past these instructions, you'll see me and Sarah. We've, we've put our uh, bios at the top as an example. So this is the sort of thing we'd like each of you to enter in. Um, you don't have to use your real name. Some people are more comfortable using their real name than others. Uh, so that's entirely your choice. Um, and then below that, there are sections. We've, we've set up some sections, and I see some of you have already been filling yourselves in, which is excellent. Uh, I put the first two of you that added yourselves here, Serena and Jacqueline, uh, in myself, and I think Jan Box and Waka Waka have, uh, have added themselves. So what you should do, uh, and you can start right now, you can do this immediately after the class. I would suggest if you have time, do it as soon as we're done here uh, so that we can get our teams together, is click any, any place where it says student and a number, just click that edit button. And that will take you into the, this is, this is after you've set up your account. Uh, this will take you into the edit screen and you will then, um, where it says student four, just type in your name. Uh, and then Below that, you can type in your, uh, your introduction. And you can go down and, uh, and save that. Click Save Page at the bottom. This is where some of you might run into edit conflicts. So uh, if that happens, again, just, just hit the back button in your browser and copy your text out and start from scratch. Um, and then once you've, once you've done that, you'll add your, your, your name and your bio. And then you can come back here once you've gotten a feel for that and click on one of the earlier ones. I'm going to click on Serena's. And you'll see this little bit of wiki code here where it says squiggle squiggle user and then a vertical bar and then her username. So this is the account, the account name that she chose for her Wikipedia account. So if you copy that format, you could, you could just copy this line and then go back and click into your own. Uh, so I'm going to click on Waka Waka Bird Boings here then you can paste that in where it is uh, in, the, in the same place. Okay, Peter is typing it from scratch because he has it memorized. The that's rest right. of us don't to have copy, it memorized. So just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's why I had you go back and, and copy. So yes, I, I, I typed it myself. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, so and I'm going to just preview this so that you can see that will come out with um, this nice line at the beginning that, oh, and I didn't, I, I should have put an extra uh, carriage return there. That's why it all ran it. If, if you only have one, uh, one return at the end of a line, sometimes those lines will get run together. So I'm going to preview again. Preview is a really nice tool. It lets you see what you're about to save before you save it. And you can see this is how it comes out. So I'm not going to save this. Um, and just click the cancel down at the bottom. But that's how you add yourself to a team. Um, so just you, you just pick any available entry and add yourself to it, and then those four people you'll you'll be working with throughout the rest of the class. Um, 
then it's it's also going to be uh, the, the most important thing for you to do uh, before next week is to have some discussion with each other about how you're going to interact. Uh, at minimum, we'd like you to each send each other an email every week uh, saying something about your homework, what article you've worked on, or something useful that you learned in one of the readings, something like that. Um, and just, just check in with each other. And uh, if there are some questions that you can answer for each other, uh, that's great. Or if something interesting comes up, with one of your classmates, uh, we'll, uh, we can discuss it in the next class. So I'll, I'll try to begin each class by asking uh, if anything interesting has happened out there, and that'll be a good, if you've already talked about it just a little bit amongst yourselves, um, some of those ideas will come out and we'll be able to, to bring them up for the whole class. So uh, we suggest that you use email, and, your, and as you get more comfortable with Wikipedia, your Wikipedia talk pages. In order to use email, uh, we're going to, you, you have these, once you see these teams in front of you, you'll be able to click on your classmate's user page, and then when you're on their user page, on the left-hand side, you should see an email, an email user, oh, this is important, when you set up your account, be sure to fill in your email address. So it may be that, um, that Jacqueline has not put in her email address, uh, but you should, uh, see an email link for your, yes, there we go. So under uh, under this user's page, I have just scrolled down, and it's in the toolbox. There's this link for in your email this user, and that'll give you a form where you can send them a message. Hi, I'm on your team in the Wikipedia, writing Wikipedia articles class. Uh, and uh, we would like you to choose a name for your team. It should be a fun little thing to get started with Wikipedia. Um, so where it says Team 1 at the top here, if these guys decide uh, that they want to be Team Tiger, they would just click on Edit next to Team 1. And just like we did with our own names a moment ago, you would just, where it says Team 1, type in Team Tiger. I don't think you're going to use that because it's a dumb name, but it's all that came to mind. <laughs> and then uh, under Edit Summary, it's always a good idea to explain what you've done. So here we might say change name to Team Tiger, and then you click on Save Page, and that'll change the name of your team. So here we are at exactly the end of the hour. Um, I do have a few minutes. If anyone still has questions, I meant to leave a little more time for, for questions here. So sorry to, uh, to not leave some time before the end of the hour, but please do feel free to stick around and ask. And I, I see we already have a hand. So, John, uh, if you'd like to just uh, click on the talk button and ask verbally, that's fine. Or if you want to put it in the chat window, that's fine, too. And, Sarah, if there's anything that's come up, uh, please let me know now. I do have a couple of quick notes, but um, I don't want to interrupt. Who, who did you call him? John, uh, John Smith has raised his hand, and I'm not sure if... Tom, if you're talking, we cannot hear you. So I think we'll we'll wait for him to figure that out, and uh, when he does, he can let us know. But Sarah, why don't you tell me anything that's come up? That was... um, I was just going to say for people who've never even been on Wikipedia before, congratulations on getting this far. <laughs> <laughs> and some, if it if it seems like Pete has been moving really quickly in some of these little edits here. He, we have provided links to instructional videos that should show you exactly how to make your first edits. Uh, if you go to the week one page, there is um, a list of homework assignments that will take you through it very, very slowly and carefully. But um, I think should anyone get stuck at any point, if we have not been clear about how we would like this to work, Pete, maybe you can just show them again how to get to the talk tab for the course. Yes. We'd like it if all questions were just sort of herded into the into one area. Okay. Uh, yes, and actually I just see, uh, I, I will do that, and also Christine just brought up a really important point, um, which is that, uh, you know, if, if you're sensitive about who has your email address, you might want to set up a, a, a new Gmail account or something like that for sharing with your team. Um, 
generally we won't have email addresses visible on the screen. It could be we, it's possible that we would mess up at some point and that would happen. So I don't think things would get out past your your team, but it is it is possible. It's something to think about for anyone who's really concerned about privacy. But to get back to Sarah's uh, point, which is a really good one, uh, from the the main Wikipedia page that we've been looking at, which is at that that short address, I'm going to type in again here just so you remember it. So this this will always be your your home page for the class. Um, that's going to redirect you here. And then under class pages, you'll have a, a link for each week. So if you click on week, week one, this is going to be the best place to go to find inf information relative, relevant to this week. Um, you're going to see everything that we brought up. And then down at the bottom, you'll see the homework that, uh, that we want you to do. And again, this week's homework is especially important for laying out the groundwork that's going to be um, that's going to work for the rest of the class. So setting up your teams and your user account and things like that. Uh, finally, the um, if you click if you want to ask a question, uh, always click the talk tab um, on this main page, um, and that will take you to a place where you can click new section and ask a question. And we also suggest that you uh, before every class. Uh, check in here and see what other people have asked or what other people have commented on, and you may you may learn interesting things as we're going into class. So I, I have seen John. I've seen you raise your hand and lower it a couple of times. Uh, are you having trouble using the chat window or the the talk he, button? He we haven't actually, been able to hear you. He put a question into the chat box, which is a this is fairly specific about how to view your number of contributions, and so I just answered that in in chat. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, sorry, I missed that. I wasn't scrolled all the way down. This is why we have Sarah watch the chat because I'm sometimes technically actually, you know, I like a, a flood of uh, short questions about how to sort of stay in, how to how to okay. work towards the badge, how will we know how many contributions they've made, yes. things like this are flowing in, and so I yes. think first of all, we'd encourage putting these right. questions right where Pete just said on the talk tab. But uh, Pete, if you if you yeah. if you want to address any of it. Um. Yeah, I think um, these are these are questions that we're going to get to uh, in next week and in the next couple of classes. We we don't expect people to start working on their final projects until I think it's week three that we have it in the syllabus. Uh, some people may want to get started earlier, uh, but uh, really we'll we'll get to that uh, a little further on. There, uh, it is pretty easy to figure out uh, what your contributions are when you're logged in. It's just this contributions link on the right hand side. Um, but as far as really understanding how to look at, how to understand what's going on in that feature, again, that's something that we'll be covering in more detail later. And uh, and so I, I hope it's okay if I leave that question for uh, for next week or the week after. Um, but I do mm -hmm. see Surya has a question about how to join a team. So um, I'm going to go back to that Teams page and let's make sure that we've at least got that covered because that's an important piece. So student teams, so you've got this teams page, and I think you've gotten that far. And so you say you're trying to join team nine. Wow, we have a lot of people. Okay, so, uh, oh, this is interesting. Okay, so I hadn't, I, I, I don't think I said this explicitly. My idea was that people would join the teams at the top first and sort of fill them out uh, as they fill up. Um, but, uh, so we, we may end up having to recombine people a little bit. Um, but so team nine, so I think things have gotten a little bit messed up here as people have um, have made some edits. So why don't, why don't I just do a couple of really quick fixes before I, uh, before I answer your questions. So don't worry about what you're seeing on the screen here. I'm just going to do this really quick and get it back. I think part of why you're having difficulty is because uh, the page has gotten a little bit mixed up. So now, okay, so now we have team nine. If you want to add yourself to that. Um, so, Surya, are you one of the people already here? Are you uh, Patricia or, or uh, Kaylita Sal? Or are you someone new? And I think you're someone new based on those names. Surya is asking how to, how to join the team. Yes, okay. So, so um, you're going to want to click on the edit button next to student three. 
not in there at the moment. Okay, so you, you would click next to student three. Where it says student three, you would select that and type in your name. So I don't know if Surya is your given name or your username or both. Um, it's, this is really, you know, as you choose. Uh, if you want to put your real name in, we encourage it, but you don't have to if you don't want to. And then after, then below that line, um, you're going to just type in, I am from, I'm going to just make this up, the planet Neptune, you know, and I am interested in Wikipedia because X, Y, Z, just a sentence or two about yourself and what you're interested in, uh, whatever you, whatever you want to share. And then you're going to go down to the bottom and if for the edit summary, you might say join team and then click on save page. So does that make sense? Did that, is there anything I missed there, Surya, that isn't, uh, isn't coming together for you? Surya says that it's, it's a yes. Thank you. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, I see my chat window uh, wasn't scrolling there, so now I see what's going on. All right. So I think we probably really should wrap up. Uh, I need to get going, and I know Sarah does pretty soon. If there's anything else that's really urgent that's her, that's holding someone back, please do speak up. I, I, I could stay for a moment uh, if there's one or two more quick questions. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you've uh, learned enough here to be able to leave your questions on the on the talk page, and we will be watching that closely. And Sarah has just uh, posted her email address, and here I'll post mine as well. In general, uh, it's, it's, it's better to leave things on the talk page, but in these early stages, do feel free to email us if you're really stuck. Like if you can't figure out how to use the talk page. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, well, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, okay, and uh, yeah, I see that, uh, Patricia, thank you. Um, and uh, one thing I didn't mention before is that in order to record these, uh, in order to record these sessions, uh, the room needs to be empty. It's just sort of a, a quirk of the software. It won't give us our recording until it's empty. So if we kick you out at the end of the class, it's not because we don't love you. So we look forward to seeing you in the, in the lab session. Uh, let's see, what is that, 48 hours from now, 47 hours from now, uh, Thursday or Friday, depending on what hemisphere you're in at the same time. So just join us here the same way you joined this class. Thanks, everybody. Everybody, see you soon. <laughs>